Well, on vacation, I went to Dahlonega, Georgia, which is the site of the first major gold rush in U.S. history. Um, there are two mines you can go and check out there. This one, Consolidated Gold Mines, has a underground tour, guided tour. And I'll put a link to the website for the mine down below. If you're interested or in the area, please go check it out. It was a fun trip. Uh, with the tour, you get a sample pan of gold with a few flakes in there. It's nothing spectacular, but it is still fun to do. And we even had a few small gemstones in our pans. But the main attraction is the tour here at this mine. And the tour is well worth it. Intro, take 473. Cue music. Cue <laughs> <Keep> coins. <laughs> All right, awesome. Now pick them up, I'm not rich. If you're ever in the area or do plan a trip down to Georgia, uh, do go check out the mines. It is well worth the trip. Now before the tour, there's a little waiting room you can sit into if, you, if you're done looking at the shop and uh, doing your gold panning and stuff. There is some artifacts and some information about those artifacts and about the mine itself. They do have some uh, quartz with some gold embedded in it to show you what uh, those look like. Pretty cool to see if you've never seen them. And our tour guide for this trip was Taylor. He did an amazing job. We all had a, a blast going around the mine and, and learning about the history of gold mining. Really cool. To start off the history lesson, because this is a history lesson, walking and talking tour, we opened our doors for mining back in 1898. They closed the doors in 1906, though. There was only eight years of mining here. The mm. reason it was eight years, though, these guys were very bad with the money. There's a lot of gold still down here if you want to see that kind of stuff. Now, as we enter into the mine here, uh, I do want to apologize for some of the audio and video effects i'm not the best at holding the camera and going around and shooting stuff i'm using my phone so i do apologize for some of that um as you enter the mine the first major stop you have down here you can see it down at the end here is where a huge vein of quartz was this vein was sticking out of the top of the mountain and a farmer tripped over it and that set off the the major gold rush in the area here they are finding gold just laying on the ground, chunks of gold, and uh, this area right here was filled. They mined this whole spot out, and the tour guide will talk about that here in just a second. And also there's more details about the gold rush and gold mining out on the website, so do go check it out. Now, this is called the Knight's Vein. It's the largest vein of quartz ever found east of the Mississippi River. But you guys want to know how much gold is in the one spot. So in total from this vein right here, they got 54 pounds and 9 ounces of gold just wow. from the vein. Wow. Well, the thing is, there's a lot more still down here to this day. I'll talk about that here in a little bit. So I also mentioned that we closed our doors in 1906. This mine, the place was abandoned for a little over 70 years, up until the 1980s. That's when our current owner bought the place. Now, if you bought an abandoned gold mine, you'd want to know how much gold is in it, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. So if you ever find yourselves in this predicament, just call an assayer. Ooh, that was a good drip right there. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, assayers, they take lots of samples, and they're going to help you know how many minerals and resources you got. But to what quality and quantity, you want to know how much gold is still down here. So the gentleman that came out here told us 80% of the gold that was here in the 1800s, 80% of it is still down here. It's wow. a lot of gold. Well, the problem is, see, right now gold is over $2,300 an ounce, but in the 80s when we did this, gold hit a low point. The lowest I saw mm -hmm. in the records was about $25 an ounce. Okay. Yeah. We thought it was a lot more lucrative to give tours. So how's it going, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> By the time the price went back up, we landed this mine on the National Historic Registry. So this is a historic landmark. Sadly, I'm not allowed to blow stuff up anymore. Yeah. Oh, I'm devastated too, trust yeah. me. But do you guys have any questions before we head down any further? Oh my gosh, you okay. Oh, wow. There's 
salamanders here. Yeah, those are baby salamanders. Oh, cool. Here, there's a couple here. There's a frog back there. Oh, he, there's, there's another one over there. <laughs> Is that a little one or a big one? This, this is a good size one. Oh, well, you don't see the big one here. But... <laughs> Yeah, it's a big one. Oh, yeah. oh my god, that's that that it. Oh my god, that's 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 it. Oh my the equivalent to 20 stories. You're all 20 stories underground at the moment, but luckily for all of us, we went into the side of a mountain, not the top of the mountain. You didn't walk down this far. You guys mainly drove down this far, but you guys know this is an inactive gold mine, right? I don't know if anybody's aware. We are currently underneath the largest active gold mine in the area. It's directly above our heads at this moment. You guys know what that one is? Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> now, to be specific, it's the garden section of Walmart, but if you go there later, you guys might realize they have a men's room in the garden section. You see that blue pipe up there? It's got nothing to do with this. Uh, <laughs> this <laughs> the horse is so annoying. You want to get to it, so you get out of the horse. It's not really messy. And that's why they don't do commercial items here. They do that in Alaska, Arizona. They don't even go up to Last 
right? Come on this way. These holes here, so these are left here by the miners back in the day. You guys know what they put in the holes though? Uh, that I? I knew you were listening. Now keep in mind, each one of the holes is six feet deep. They wanted them full of dynamite. They were putting eight pieces in each hole. The trouble is, my arm doesn't fit back there. Luckily, we got ourselves a stick. I know it's a high-tech mine, but what you do with it, you put a piece of dynamite here and then a blasting cap, but only the first piece of dynamite in the stack is gonna get the blasting cap to set that off. When you get it in there though, very gently push it all back. If you get too rough and nick the dynamite in a way it doesn't like, well, boom! <laughs> Sorry, that's how I like to wake up during the day. You did better than most though. I scared three boys this morning so bad they jumped and hit their head on the ceiling. <laughs> so you actually did pretty good. But the thing is, the boom makes a big concussive wave. And you know what a concussive wave is, buddy? You ever seen a video of an explosion on like YouTube? Really, that's surprising. So watch a video of an explosion later. There's a thing that looks like a bubble coming off of it. That's a concussive wave. They're waves of energy, but they mess things up like us humans. They also mess with our lights. Now, we did not have LEDs back in the day. This is new technology. What we had at this time in history is known as Edison lamps, but those would operate a lot like old Christmas tree lights. So if one bulb goes down, they all go down. To avoid the issue, they just didn't install any lights in this part of the mine. Now they did still have to see because they're working back here. So the owners had a solution, candles. <laughs> well, it's an old school solution, but each miner is given three candles a day. They last two hours a piece. That's a good six hours of light, but remember how long the shifts were? 12. Yeah, but if you get two people working together with six hours of light, it's 12 hours, isn't it? We'll put that in the miscellaneous category, thank you, sir. <laughs> but full warning for all of you, I'm about to turn the lights off in here, so if you are afraid of the dark, close your eyes. You'll never notice the difference. <laughs> but if you guys wanna help me count down for this, feel free. You guys ready? You, like to count yep. down? you look like you're up to no good all of a sudden, man. <laughs> you excited? Well, don't worry, I got my trusty candle. We're gonna be just fine. You guys ready? Yeah. Yep. All right, count down on me if you want. Three, Three two, two, one. one. It's pretty dark, doesn't it? Yep. Now, can you guys see me at the moment? No. no. Uh, luckily, I got my candle. Now, sad news is all it really does is illuminate me, so sorry for the nightmares you might have later. <laughs> but the candle. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I got myself. Open the lights. Do what? Open the lights. Uh, we'll turn them on in a minute. See, here's the thing. This candle, it's about as bright as one bulb from the Edison lamps would be, but I mentioned they were using candles in this section. This section's made using hammers and hand steels. You guys use hammers before? Mm -hmm. So you know it's tricky for a guy with a 15 pound sledgehammer to hold a candle? That's left of the gentleman holding the hand steel. You know, the new guy. Mm -hmm. You guys use hammers, you know it's easy to miss though, don't you? Yeah. So what do you think would happen if he misses and hits my hand with a 15 pound sledge? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ouch. I'm gonna drop the candle. <laughs> Everything else ends up being a question. <laughs> now, main question is where the light switch go. Oh, found it. <laughs> now, if you guys see my pocket smoking later, let me know, okay? I do not want to catch on fire again. Now, do you remember how I said each one of the holes has eight pieces of dynamite? Well, this is what it looks like in the hole, but this gray one at the end, this is gonna represent the one that gets the blasting cap. The wire for it would be tucked underneath, and they all run out the entrances of the holes. All of this wiring means right here in a bundle. Off of the bundle of wires, there'd be a six foot fuse. That six foot fuse will give you three minutes. You get three minutes to get from here to the safety tunnel back there by the stove drill. In the darkness, you just saw the whole way. By the way, just so you know for the reference of it, the, this is the old dynamite boxes that weigh yeah, anywhere between not. four and six hundred pounds a week. Wow. Wow. Yeah, guys, they went through four to six hundred pounds of dynamite in any given week.
Yeah, they're getting some drinking. Oh, she's having a lot of fun. She is. She's having a lot of fun. Just so you know, this is the drifter drill. This is the solution they had for the stoke drill back there. It came here in 1903. What makes it a big deal though, the drill bit. It's hollow to let water through. The water would do a couple things like catch all the silica dust that comes from the gold mining. Somebody's breathing it in, but for the efficiency they get here, they earn a raise to $2 a day. It's pretty good, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Now here's the thing though, $2 a day in 1903, that could buy you a house in just six months time. Mm -hmm. If you're not spending all your money at the tavern, like most of them have a bit of a problem with. Thing is, not a whole lot of them still kicking around nowadays, so miners were very rough with their tools, but there was a metal claim in World War II to help with the war effort. A lot of these got turned into tanks over the years. There's about 20 of them still in existence. This is one of two that I know of that still work. You guys want me to turn them on? Yeah, sure. yeah. Now, before I do, just a heads up, it's at about 20% power. It's nowhere near as loud as it used to be. We're trying to get to the last four generations to come. But if you would like to record this, by all means, feel free to. It's not often you know, a 21 year old drill. You know, brag the guy at Home Depot later. Nice. <laughs> but uh, when best, I turn it off, best warranty I'm ever. bring my finger to my lips. And when I do, uncover your ears and stay very quiet. Sound good? <laughs> All righty, so three, two, one. Oh my god. Did you hear the echo? Yeah. I like the echo. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's only 20% power. I know, right? that's amazing. Well, imagine this thing at 100%, and when it is, but it's against the rocks, the sound doubles further from there. Mm -hmm. But they had four of these drills operating spaces this small. You guys want to guess what the issue was here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they were going deaf. And they went deaf in three months on average. Now, Jeez. remember how I said you go to my house in six months? Now, they had a problem with this, as you all can imagine. So they had a talk to with the owners. They used a system known as the alternating system. So you get two weeks on the drill and then two weeks elsewhere on the property. That did extend their hearing, but only for five more months. They had eight months on average in total. Mm -hmm. Now, you did not lose the job when you lost your hearing. You were told to pay good attention. You guys remember every job is going to have two people, right? Yeah. If the second gentleman you work with starts to run, don't ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was a little bit of the tour through the gold mine there very awesome trip and well worth it if you ever get a chance to tour a gold mine and if you ever get a chance to tour this one specifically i would definitely say please go check it out now again this is one of two mines you can go visit and if you had to choose one or the other i would suggest this one because the tour is well worth it the guided tour awesome and i'll have another video breaking down what what you get to see and do at the other mine and i did have fun at both mines but this one the guided tour just pushes it over the edge all right well i do hope you enjoyed the video if you did hit that thumbs up helps me out drop a comment down below let me know what you thought thank you very much for watching everyone have a great day and i want to give a very special thank you to all the viewers who have signed up as members thank you very much for going above and beyond to help support the channel i very very much appreciate it if anyone is interested in becoming a member, feel free to check out the link below. Again, thank you very much for your support.